Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a quick overview of rework stations, what their benefits are, why you should or shouldn't get one depending on your applications, and the difference between a rework station, which is this, and a heat gun, like this. So a rework station is a hot air station, so um, it is a tool that you um, use to emit hot air and it is used for electronics as well as various other tasks that require you to heat things up to a certain temperature and a heat gun is obviously designed to emit hot air as well so people um, might wonder what the difference is uh, and you know how significant it is uh, so <coughs> um, one of the most significant price difference <laughs> One of the most significant differences you'll notice right away when shopping for them is the price. So, heat guns, uh, um, you, you might see them for $20 or maybe even less in some cases, like $15. And uh, um, the workstations, on the other hand, can easily um, be over be more than $100. And if you're going into high-end brands, it can be even worse than that in both cases. Uh. <coughs> Um, if you're familiar with uh, <coughs> the concept of you know, commercial um, applications in which you know someone has to come to work every day and you know perform a certain task every day and they can't afford to ever um, mess it up and they have to do it very frequently. Um, there are devices for that and there are also devices for more occasional use at home or you know on the side then so um, heat guns are more like the latter but the difference there are other far more important differences than that so a rework station has precise temperature control as well as some other little features that are good for and convenient if you're you know working on SMD electronics frequently so SMD electronics are surface mount and that means that they are <coughs> it means let me just take out for an example. It means that they're mounted on top of the surface of a circuit board, unlike other electronics which have pins that push through the holes in a circuit board. So um <coughs> I'll just show you the um microcontroller here. So this microcontroller, okay, right, mm -hmm. it's an RM57 MCU, so this is an SMD integrated circuit. So um, as you can see, there are, can't really see much underneath here, but there are no pins sticking through. This appears to be a BGA package, so you know, that's of the variety that you would use a rework station for. <coughs> Because a soldering iron isn't really, um, you'll have a very hard time if you try to do this, to attach this or detach it using a soldering iron because there are so many tiny terminals, way too many. Right, so, um, there are also through hole devices on this board such as these expansion headers. So yeah, they um, actually penetrate the circuit board through to the other side. And they can be soldered with a regular soldering iron. <coughs> anyway, all of these devices have temperature limitations, and at the same time, the solder, which you can't really see here because it's a BGA package and therefore the solder is underneath the chip, sandwiched between it and the board, the solder is <coughs> requires a minimum temperature to melt, so you need to um, get, you know, within that little um what's the word now you need to get within that little window there and um, it can't be too hot and it can't be too cold cold so <coughs> the I'll just put that to the right so the <coughs> rework station has very precise temperature controls which I'm about to show you but first, 
I'm just gonna demonstrate <coughs> an important feature here, especially if usefully if you're using frequency. So just listen carefully as I pick up the handle. And I'm not saying all reverse stations have this feature, but many do. Right, so it turns itself back on if you lift up the heart of the gun, right? So we were station implies a desktop device. This is a desktop device, it's not portable like a heat gun. So you set it somewhere permanent than a desktop and then you can do things like set the temperature or control the fan speed. And that too. You can go all the way up to 450 on this model. That's Celsius. Or turn the fan down. That kind of thing. So that kind of precise control is useful if you just want to get the fan speed and temperature just right to avoid blowing your ACs or the chips across a circuit board. But you also need to ensure that you have enough airflow to you know heat everything up properly. And and also as even as possible. So um when I put it back down on the holster it shuts itself back off, which is a useful safety feature and please <laughs> don't mind that uh, um the monitor is you know behind it is further away than it looks but um i just moved it to this position for the video it's normally over there out of the way of everything not blowing or anything for when i'm using it but i just moved it over here for convenience just for this video <coughs> right so um safety wise is useful because if you have something operating at temperatures as high as 450 degrees Celsius, you're gonna want to um, have it shut itself off automatically as you put it down because you only have two hands and that's, that's gonna be um, the reality that is going to burn in, no pun intended, sorry, if <laughs> when you're um, working on circuit boards uh, because it's, it's gonna um, allow you eventually if you find that you know you can't safely put it down and one hand might be tired while the other hand is holding this so you have a hard time trying to turn it off so that you can put it down that kind of thing and also the fact that it has a holster is useful because um you don't have to put it down on the hot surface if you look at this heat gun here um we're not gonna be able to see anything now but um yes i have um struggled with that had a little struggle with it too, where I had to put it down on a surface and the hot metal part of the tip touched the surface and burned it too. So that doesn't happen with the rework station. <coughs> that extra money is for something. So um now back to the hot air gun. The heat gun, sorry. So the heat gun it um it all so and in many cases heat guns have um lack of nozzles and they tend to be big much bigger than the nozzles of a battery work station let me just have a quick look here see how small it is compared to this and you can get even smaller ones for your station this one came with three yeah. the small nozzles are for SMP electronics this is for more like things like heating up you know in the tints or paints or you know you know larger surfaces Oh, so there you can actually see where it came into contact with a wooden surface when I was putting it down and it burned it. Right, so, um, <coughs> right, so as I was saying, the rear station offers precise temperature control so that you don't have to um, expose the electronics to more heat than they can handle and so that you can also ensure that, you know, just about that is just about hot enough uh, to melt the solder and reflow it uh, so that you can get your job done properly. So, um, <coughs> I would say never use a heat gun for soldering electronics because um, there's a serious lack of temperature control in those things. They're really just bent to um, blow out a crap ton of extremely hot air and without any precision or reliable temperature control the rework station has more 
precise temperature control type of temperature controls so it continuously checks itself and it makes sure that it's the right temperature of course there's a possibility that some cheap stations may not actually have that feature built in but generally reward stations are supposed to have that so because that's the safest way to go so that you know that you get actually getting the temperature that you set it to using the buttons so on a heat gun there's usually a higher low setting right as you can see here it's just um a basic toggle switch high and low so on um, the packaging i said you get the temperature of 200 degrees celsius on the low setting and the temperature of 600 degrees celsius which is far too high for any form of soldering and any electronics for that matter if you set it to high so um there's also hardly any control of the fan speed two speeds so it's only two speeds and two temperature settings and uh, it, it does tend to get hotter over time and um heat guns maybe there are exceptions but um, i noticed that heat guns tend to not have um te temperature regulation meaning i think they just switch on the heating element and finalize it too so they, the temperature may actually vary um, while you're using it too, and it may may even you know, increase over time and get start to get hotter than you intended it to. Then I'm just speculating, but um, it's something to be aware of. But you are much more likely to destroy your electronics if you use a heat gun even on the low setting. It's 20 degrees Celsius. You know. It's um, maybe it may actually be too low for certain things as well. So um, that's another case in which a reward station is useful. You can set it to 100 degrees, 200, 250, 280, 326 degrees Celsius, or 448, whatever it is. You can set very specific temperatures. So that is useful. And uh, what else? Um, well, it has some other benefits like um, replaceable, easily replaceable parts. So, um, but as you can see, the e workstation and the power supply fan parts are in here, but the hot air gun itself is um, in here pretty much. Right? So, meaning the heating element and the fan are in here, and that's a nozzle. Um, the fan is a, that's an ordinary blower, really. And then the hot air comes out through there. So, um, right. So, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I actually uploaded a video of me um, doing um, my first rework soldering job to this channel if you'd like to check it out. And, uh, happy soldering! Thanks for watching.